If you want to know how to make macOS more efficient and faster to use, allowing you to get more done in less time, then this is the video for you. I'm Dian Schiddeboom and I've been using macOS for many years. Let me know in the comments if you know from which version this wallpaper is from. Over the years, I found many ways to speed up my workflow and just general use in macOS. Now these tips on their own are gonna be relatively small, but when added together, create a substantial difference to your day-to-day -day use of macOS. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is hot corners. And hot corners allows you to quickly see your desktop or application windows simply by dragging your cursor to a corner of your screen. For example, on my MacBook, I have it set so that if I go to the bottom left corner of the screen, it will automatically show my desktop. And this is useful as this will allow me to quickly drag and drop a file from my desktop, for example, a screenshot into the application I'm currently working with. And to go back to my windows, I simply go back to the same corner and my windows are back instantly. To activate hot corners, we're first gonna go onto system preferences. And then we're gonna click on desktop and screensaver. And then we'll go into the screensaver menu. And then in the bottom right corner, we'll find hot corners. Now from here, as you can see, we can have each corner of the screen selected to a specific function. As I mentioned before, you can say things like show the desktop or for example, lock the screen. Now, personally, I like to use only the bottom left and right corner for this function, as I found if I use the top left or top right corner of the screen, I found myself sometimes unintentionally activating this feature. For example, when going through menus in the menu bar on the top of the screen. Now, of course, you don't have this in the bottom of the screen, so my advice would be to only add hot corners to the lower left or lower right sides of the screen. The next tip I'm gonna show you is probably the one that I use most every day. And this allows you to instantly switch between your open apps on your Mac. Let me show you how this is done. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is press and hold the command key. And then we're gonna tap the tab key once. And this will bring up a menu of all of the open apps you have running on your Mac. Pressing the tab key once will allow you to cycle through them. And whichever app is selected is the one that your Mac will open once you let go of the command key. So let's say I'm currently working on a thumbnail in Lightroom and I wanna quickly switch to Safari, which has my channel open. What we're gonna do is press and hold command and then press the tab key, make sure that Safari is selected and then we'll let go. And as you can see, we'll then instantly switch to Safari. Now to go back to Lightroom, since this is our most recently opened app, all I have to do is simply press and hold command and then tab the tab key once and it will then instantly switch back to this app. As you can see, doing so will bring us right back to Lightroom and vice versa, we can go right back to Safari in the same way. Next, I wanna talk about Mission Control and Mission Control is a great way to instantly see all of your open apps and windows on your Mac. So to activate this on the MacBook, simply swipe up on your trackpad using three fingers. As you can see, this will then instantly bring up Mission Control, giving you a clear overview of all of your open apps and windows. If you are on an iMac or a Mac mini or do not have a trackpad, you probably have a function key in the top row of your keyboard to activate mission control. If you do not, you can also activate mission control by pressing the control key and then the up arrow key to activate it as well. Now I wanna take this one step further and that is through using multiple desktops. To activate this, I'm going to go with my cursor to the top of the screen and this will show us all the open desktops. And then we can add more desktops by going to the right of the screen and then press the plus button to add as many as we like. Having multiple desktops will now allow us to click and drag windows from our main desktop to others to divide them up. So for example, I can take Lightroom and click and drag this into the second desktop. As you can see, this will now clear space on our main desktop, freeing up with less windows. Now what we can do is simply swipe out of mission control, again using three fingers, but this time swiping down. And then we can swipe between the multiple desktops using three fingers again, but then swiping to the right or left. So going to the second desktop, we can simply swipe to the right, and then we're back in the second desktop, which now has Lightroom. And to go back to the first desktop, we simply swipe to the left. Now, if you're on an iMac or a Mac mini and don't have a trackpad, you can use the keyboard shortcut control and left and right arrow keys to also instantly switch between your open desktops. Before I go into the display section of this video, I wanna talk about a few MacBook specific tips, more specifically using the trackpad. The first thing we're gonna do is open up system preferences, and then we're gonna click on trackpad. 
And in here, the first thing I like to enable is tap to click. Now, as the name implies, tap to click allows you to simply tap the trackpad rather than always having to click to select an item or open a folder. And then just above the tap to click function, we have the option to enable secondary click using the bottom right corner of the trackpad. Now, to me, as someone who works both on Windows as well as Mac OS, it simply makes sense to have the bottom right corner of the trackpad activate a secondary click. Alternatively, to right click, you'd have to hold the option key and then click a file or folder in order to right click. This just takes more time and is less efficient. And finally, in the trackpad menu, I like to turn up the tracking speed slightly. Now, how much you want to turn this up by will depend on your personal preference, and it may get a day or so to get used to the new tracking speed. But having a higher tracking speed, again, allows you to move across your screen more quickly in less time. Now let's talk about the display. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the feature which will automatically slightly dim your brightness whenever you are on battery. Now this may save battery, but personally I want to have consistent levels of brightness when it comes to my MacBook. So to activate this or to deactivate this, what we're gonna do is go into system preferences, click on battery, and then under the battery menu here, we have the option here to slightly dim the display while on battery power. Now, automatically, this will be turned on by Apple. However, again, I like to turn this off to maintain consistent screen brightness. And for the same reason, I also like to turn off automatic brightness. Now, to do this, we're going to go into displays and then unselect the automatic brightness toggle here. Now, again, I do this for the same reason of maintaining consistent brightness. For example, on my phone, I like to keep this on as the lighting conditions are constantly changing, whether I'm indoors or outdoors or late at night. But on my MacBook, I'm generally using it at home with consistent lighting. Not to mention that I often edit videos or photos in which I need that consistent brightness so that these levels aren't changing and so that I can edit more accurately. Speaking of editing videos in Final Cut Pro, I want to give a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Eric Lenz, and their new Final Cut Pro plugin. This is Lightroom Controls for Final Cut Pro. This plugin brings the beloved Lightroom style sliders to Final Cut Pro, with an extensive list of parameters making it easier than ever to correct and grade your footage. Let's take a look. First, under basic controls, I will increase the blacks to bring out the detail in my coat, decrease the whites to balance my skin tone, and under HSL, I will increase the hue to make the trees come to life. Finally, adjust the luminance to give the clip a brighter feel. This only took seconds and is just one example of what you can do with this plugin. If you're interested in this plugin, be sure to click the link in the video description and use the code DION to get 10% off your order. Thanks again to Eric Lenz. Now on to the final set of tips involving screenshots. So firstly, to take a full screen screenshot on your Mac, you can press Command Shift 3, and this will instantly take a screenshot of the entire screen and save it to the desktop. Now, if you want to select a specific area of the screen, you can press Command Shift 4. And as you can see, the cursor will change to a different icon, allowing you to click and drag and select a very specific portion of the screen. So let's say I want a part of this window, I can then let go and the screenshot will automatically be taken. But there is an easier way to quickly take a screenshot of a single window. To do this, we're gonna press Command Shift 4, just like before, and this time we're gonna press Spacebar. And this will allow us to instantly select either the desktop, a window, the dock, or even the menu bar. So I can go ahead and select this window here, and then click it to instantly take a screenshot of only that window. All right, so those are some tips and tricks that I use every day to get more done in less time on macOS. If this video helped you out, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks that I didn't mention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.